Hello, Blake Rudis here with F64 Academy and F64 Elite, and today we're going to talk about the color picker. I know it's not like the craziest, most epic tutorial in the world, but you know what? We need to understand this thing so we can make better color decisions in our images. Let's go and hop into Photoshop. I'll teach you how to use this thing. So a couple weeks ago, I made this tutorial on using the difference blend mode. And in that, I was using the color picker in Photoshop to find uh, certain colors and change that color using the color picker. And I assumed that everyone knew how to use the color picker like I do. And you know what assumption does, right? Assuming makes an ass out of you and me. You break up the word, yeah, whatever. So I really just want to take the time to break down the color picker because it is a very important tool for getting the colors that we want in our images. So uh, what I have here is just a test swatch of different colors, blue, red, green. This is something that I use when I test uh, my color theory stuff. So the color picker in itself can be found just by clicking on any of the colors here, or if you make something like a solid color overlay, like we're going to do here with this, it's going to automatically pop open the color picker. And the color that it chose when we did that was the color that we had here in our uh, palette. If you want to get those colors back to black and white, just press D and it will automatically default those colors back to black and white. And now you'll notice that when I press solid color, it's picking black because it picks the foreground color that is in my color palette. Another cool tip about this color palette, if you press the X key, it's gonna switch between black and white. So if you're masking, D and X are your best friend. So now if I were to take the solid color, it's gonna fill with white. And the color picker, this is the thing I want to talk to you about. This object right here, the color picker. There is a lot of information in here, and it's it's really kind of all up in your face. Uh, you've got HSB. What does that necessarily mean? You've got RGB. You've got LAB and CMYK. Now, the color white is showing up as 0H, 0 saturation, and 100B. So this is hue. This is saturation. This is brightness. This is red value, green value, blue value. Right here we have lab which would be your uh, lightness channel, your A channel, and your B channel, and then CMYK for printing, so cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. So what you see here is that you've got every different breakdown, essentially, of the color properties right here in the color picker all at once. So this little hashtag down here, that's a hex code or a web color. So for instance, F64 Academy Blue is 2489C3. And that would be the color that we have for F64 Academy Blue. And if you look at this, once I typed in 2489C3 down here, look what happened. Our red moved to 36, our green moved to 137, and our blue to 195. That's telling us that this color that I use for F64 Academy is 195 points blue out of 255, 137 points green out of 255, and 36 points red out of 255. So what's the lab here? Well, in the lab here, the L, that's the lightness of this color, is about a 54 point. The uh, A channel, it's negative 13. B channel, negative 39. And if we look at cyan uh, percentage, it's 79% cyan, 36% magenta, 4% yellow, 0% black. You see these little radial dial buttons here? This is what, what spawned the idea of doing this tutorial. Look at this here, this little sidebar right here. This allows me to select up and down along the uh, color wheel, essentially, all the way around, if we look here, 360 points. This radial dial is set to hue. This would be hue, saturation, and brightness. So with this set to zero in the hue, that's at the bottom of the color wheel. If we change this to 345, it's moving around the color wheel. Now, this is showing a solid strip. It's like they took the color wheel that was a round strip and they broke it and they moved it like this to make it just one vertical line instead of a rotation. This would be degrees. This is percent up to 100%. And this is brightness up to 100%. So if we have a 100% bright, 100% saturated, and 345 hue, that is basically saying that we have the most uh, color for this one individual color. If we change this to 180, that's gonna be pure potent cyan. And we know that, we know that this is pure potent cyan because when we look down here, there is no red here, there's only green and only blue. So you see how all of these things work together. All of these numbers work together, they don't work independently. But this radial dial tells us what 
property we're looking at. So right now I'm looking at the hue of this color. Hue is the color of the color. What color do I want to make cyan? Well, if I move this up, I can make cyan and magenta. If I move this to saturation now, look how this bar changes. This bar goes from, from magenta down to a white color here. If we go to brightness, we are only switching between pure magenta and its darkest form. So the saturation be pure magenta into white, the brightness would be pure magenta into black. And as we move that bar, it's sticking us to that one solid magenta color. So if we say, I like this solid magenta, but I want it to be a little bit darker, instead of just trying to click around here and find it around here, we can go to the brightness and get the exact uh, shade of this color. So if we pull this down, that's going to make that magenta more black. If we pop back over to hue, though, it is going to change the position of where we are on this solid color wheel. So the, the question came up when I was doing this tutorial on the difference blend mode. Someone sent me a screenshot of their color picker and they had it selected right here. This radial dial was on red and they said, I can't see the hue bar like you see it. All I see is red and blue. And that's because this box is checked here. When you have this radial dial checked here, it's going to change the bar to, to make you strictly within the realm of the reds within uh, your, your image. Here it's going to be within the greens and here it's going to be within the blues. So depending on whatever color you pick here, like something like let's take a green and we go into the color green, we are going to see a very high saturation of the color green with this radial dial selected because that's where we are. If we go into lightness, this is going to show how this color green would translate into the LAB mode. And here would be the A channel, which your A channel is your greens and your yellows and your blues. And your B channel is your magenta and cyan. So if we begin to move the uh, slider here, uh, when we're set to something like hue, you can see that there's two different colors here. One says new and one says current. This is the current color that I chose. So the current color that I chose was that F64 Academy Blue or 2489C3. So if I move this up, you're going to see that it's going to save that current color for me. Here we have add to swatches. So if I did like this color, I could click that button. It would add it over to my swatches. And if I have my swatches somewhere over here in Photoshop, you would see this color get added to it. Color libraries, these are your different Pantone color libraries. So if you want to know what the Pantone color of that magenta is, that is Pantone P88-8C. So this can be a very useful thing to find those Pantone colors. Doesn't this look a lot like uh, what we would see when we go shopping for paint colors uh, when we go to something like uh, Home Depot or Lowe's or something like that, right? And here we have, we have a whole bunch of different libraries that we can select from here. So if you know the Pantone color that you want, that you need for the certain Pantone library that you're looking for, you can find that exact color right here in that Pantone library. The really interesting thing about this though is if I, if I go back to this color of 2489C3, which is my F64 Academy Blue. Watch this. If I select this thing that says only web colors, these are going to be web safe colors. If I click that, it's going to automatically select my color picker and make it only web safe colors. The funny thing about this is when I was designing the F64 Academy Blue color, I designed it in Photoshop. I love the 2489C3 color, but when you say only web colors, look what happens. It automatically translates it to a different color. It translates it to 3399CC. So the funny thing is that there's a loss of translation of color between what I'm doing in Photoshop and what happens when it goes to the web and web safe colors. It's not the same color. It's really interesting. Some websites, the way it reads that 2489C3 color actually comes out a little bit more like this. So if we uncheck only web safe colors, it's not going to go back to 2489C3. It's going to stay selected at that web color. So if you really like a color, let's say you really like this magenta color and you say only web safe colors, that's actually going to be more like 993399 rather than the uh, magenta that you picked before, which is slightly off. So you're going to see some difference in the translation between web colors and the colors that you are using in Photoshop. You don't always lose that translation, but sometimes it happens. So just keep that in mind. Sometimes it's great if you're doing uh, stuff, if you're doing web-based stuff to only work in uh, the web safe color. Once you press OK, it's going to go ahead and change that color to whatever color you had selected. Again, that was over here using the color fill. But if I go over here to my palette, it's going to be the same thing. Here you see color picker for foreground color. So it lets you know. And here you see the color picker 
for the solid color. So just know if your color picker doesn't look like mine, you might have S selected or B selected or R or G or B. Uh, just know that the, one of the better ones to use here is actually this hue one so you can get a really precise color and uh, move it up and down within and, and then move that along the color wheel so you can get a good selection for it. I like to work in hue. Some people like to work in other areas. It's up to you. But that's the color picker in a nutshell. Nothing crazy. I just wanted to break this down for you and give you some perspective on the color picker because I assumed that everyone knew the color picker like I did. And, uh, you know, it's never a safe thing to assume those types of things. So again, my name is Blake Rudis. If you like this, please comment on it, share it, like it, and tell a friend. And if you haven't done so already, subscribe because I create these tutorials all the time and I know you're going to love them if you stick around. Thank you very much for taking the time to watch this.